And we're joined by representatives from the Texas State Bobcats, head coach Danny Casper, as well as number 22, Nigel Pearson, and number 23, Alex Peacock. Coach, if you could please start with a brief opening statement. Well, you know, we were happy to see South Alabama win that game only because I felt like it. it was even more motivating for our players to play South Alabama after they beat us pretty good at their place. Uh, they're a very good basketball team. They got a lot of talent on that team. And, uh, but I still felt like once they won the game yesterday, that even motivated our players even more to come ready to play. Uh, we walked away from that loss in Mobile uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think it's a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, feeling pretty bad about ourselves. Um, and uh, so it was a good win. I, I think the key to the victory was we kept uh, number 33, Joshua Jai, pretty much in check. Uh, he's a very good basketball player. Uh, you know, McGee stepped up in his absence and, and hurt us with some sh good shooting. Uh, so it's a very good win for us. I thought they executed very well. They played very good defense. And uh, so I'm very proud of them, uh, the way our players performed today. Thanks, Coach. This time we'll take questions for the student athletes only. Please raise your hand and wait for a microphone, and then identify yourself by name and media outlet. Questions for the student athletes. We'll start on the right side. Uh, Andrew Zimmel, University Star. Uh, Nigel, you came off a pretty, you know, below average shooting performance. Uh, going forward, you know, you had a good, you had a good season shooting the ball. Does this affect your confidence anyway? Not at all, man. We won. First of all, and, uh, second of all, I feel like I, I defended very well tonight. Uh, Earlier, I wasn't making shots. The zone kind of uh, threw me off a rhythm a little bit, but I was just trying to. I feel like I was. I had to look at the film and watch the film with Coach, but I feel like I was I was in a lot of places on defense, a lot in the right spots a lot of times. So I mean, I feel like I made up my impact on the defensive end, and I mean we got the win. So I don't care nothing about my. I don't care if I went 0 for 15. I do. <laughs> <laughs> when he got the charge early in the game, uh, very early, wasn't it? Yeah, first like minute first or two. Play. You know that was that was that that set the tone for our team. That really was a that really was an important play, in, in which he didn't score, but he he got a charge and was it on who? A Jai? Okay. Was it on Jai? Yes. And that was crucial. That was crucial. Go on the same side, bat in the back row. Deja Harrison, Sunbelt, Alex. Um, you guys dominated on the court and controlled the game the whole time. So, what do you think was working so well for you guys to dominate like this in the game? Um, just keeping up our intensity, you know, going into the game, we, we had it in our mind that we, we weren't going to get outworked. We thought we got outworked the past uh, couple games, and we said, you know, we're going to get back to how we were at the beginning and towards, you know, when we made our big run and just get back and keep up the intensity and on defense, really. You know, we know offense is going gonna, gonna to be what it is. You're either going to make shots, you're going to miss shots. But on defense, if you hold them to a, you know, a poor shooting percentage or you just hold them down, you'll, 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 you got a good chance to get the win. Either one of you guys, uh, you know, Mason Harrell came out today and played really well. We were talking about defense, picked up two really good charges that I remember. Uh, you guys are both leaders on this team, veterans of this team. Talk to us a little bit about uh, Mason growing this season. Um, the biggest thing I've seen in Mason is just his confidence. You know, early on he was like, um, you know, he's a freshman, so, you know, he's kind of got that, that shake. He's, he went from being, you know, Gatorade Player of the Year in Oklahoma to, you know, being a six, seven man. So it really was just his confidence growing, knowing when to pick his spots, you know, knowing how to mesh with the team that, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. Yeah, uh, off of that, I never worried about Mason. Mason worked hard, he, he listened. He gonna do whatever coach say. He gonna do whatever his teammates say. He, want, he gonna do whatever to win. And just that just show you that, you know, how you say you got two big charges. You know, Mason is going to be all right. He's not, Mason is as our backup point guard. Could be a starting point guard and plenty of teams in the Sun Belt. So, you know, he's just growing and getting better. This is what's going to happen over time for Mason. His future break. Any other questions for the student athletes? Time for one more here. Oh, sorry. Right back on the right, please. All right, great. <laughs> I'll ask uh, one more. Um, Guys, ball movement today. Alex, you played a really crucial role. Intensity, uh, ball movement was a, a big factor coming in. Did did you game plan for South Alabama after coming off the loss? You knew you had to move the ball more. Um, yeah, uh, 
our offense when we were down there was kind of stagnant. A lot of people, you know, our, we fell and kind of fell in love with the three a little bit, and so we just had to play in the attack, move the ball. You know, when you get in the paint, everything widens up. If you get the ball in the middle of that zone, everything widens up. So that's really what our game plan was: was to, you know, just don't settle and get the best shot you can. All right, thank you very much, guys. Uh, student athletes can head back to the locker room. Thanks. We'll have someone to get you back there when you get out to the door, too. And we'll go ahead with uh, questions for Coach Casper at this time. Coach Casper, Alex picks up two early fouls. You bring him on the bench. What do you tell him? Not much. I mean, you know, that's part of the game. I just, just, we got to hope that his, the people that are coming in can hold the, you know, can hold his water until it's his time to come back in. But, you know, for two quick fouls, 17 and 9 is good. You know, we made some, we talked about getting five charges today. I, I remember three and some other people trying to get some. And so we, I think we, for sure, we got three. We talked about getting 18 offensive rebounds We got and, and out-rebounding them by 15. We out-rebounded them by 14, and we got 15 offensive rebounds. We talked about shooting 28 free throws today and making 21. Well, we shot 27 of 35. So a lot of the things, and we told them, stay, we cannot shoot a bunch of quick threes, and we only shot 12. And we scored 79 points, so this is a great game, teaching game for our guys. You know, uh, uh, we, we, our defense was pretty good. Uh, our shot selection was pretty good. You know, there's something else we did. We changed our offense a little bit. After after studying them, uh, we went to a different zone offense uh, that that I actually uh, came, we came up with it when I was at Stephen F. Austin against UTSA when my assistant Robert Guster was at UTSA. It was they were running the same type of defense that UTSA ran back then, and. Um, you know, that's where I take some responsibility for that loss in South Alabama for not thinking of this quicker. You know, I don't know if, you know, people know this, but, you know, these guys, we didn't like the way we lost to South Alabama, but I want to give them some credit. I'm not going to make any excuses for UTA. We just got beat. But at South Alabama the week before on Monday, three guys did not practice, Peacock, Quentin Scott, and uh, Nigel Pearson. On uh, Wednesday, Trey and Marlon Davis joined them. Five did not practice, and we left on Wednesday to head to Mo to uh, Atlanta. I did not know if some of those guys were even going to make the trip. And so, yes, I was very disappointed about the South Alabama loss. It would have given us a, a conference co-championship. But then when you think back about what they went through, you know, having five guys having the flu, and one other one caught it on the last day, the day we played Saturday, Akeem Dashner. He missed the UTA game because he had the flu, and he, and he missed practice all that week. And so on top of that, Trey came down on somebody's foot five minutes into the game. And he tried to go, but he didn't play very well. And he was handicapped a little bit. You know, we won one out of two. And, and in hindsight, I looked back and said, maybe I, ought, maybe I ought to be a little bit more thankful for what we got out of that, concerning all the uh, negative things that happened to us that week. And I don't know if a lot of people know that. You know, people close to the program know that, but not, maybe not a lot of other people know that. Now, again, I'm, the get, loss to UTA, we got beat. No excuses. Yes. Joshua Roscoe, KTSW. Uh, coach, coming in, you have a, a week of rest. How crucial was that week of rest? Uh, you know, I think it's – everything – you know, this game is so mental. Maybe everything is so mental, but everything is so uh, – it's such a mental thing. You know, uh, it, it really was a matter of, uh, hey, you got to win or you die. You're done. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I really uh, I really feel like – uh, the leadership came around this week. Why they didn't come around? Well, maybe it was just that UTA played outplayed us. That's it. Maybe that's as simple as that because they're playing very well right now, or they were. So, uh, <clears throat> but uh, we the week we had a week of rest for UTA. The only difference is we were coming off the flu quite a bit of us. But you know, so a week back then, a week now. I just think that our guys were really, really, really backs against the wall. We decided we wanted. So, and as I read, I'll go back to what I said first. And I, I, when, 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 when Lafayette missed that shot that could have won the game, I breathed a sigh of relief only from the standpoint of I knew our guys would be more fired up about playing South Alabama than they would Texas State. Time for one more. 
Yeah. Slide to the front, please. Texas State Athletics, um, last couple games haven't been the best defensively. Speak a little bit about tonight's defense, more so in the first half where you guys forced 12 turnovers. Yeah, uh, it's a great question, Keontae. It's the first half defense was we kind of put them back on their heels. And, and like I said in particular, Josh Ajayi, uh, who I think is a great player, probably should have been higher up as far as all-conference voting. Uh, you know, we really stopped him. And uh, but in the second half, we did not we did not play as well. We gave up 39. I think we had 12 turnovers at the, at, at the half, and that's a lot of turnovers for one half. And I really thought our defense caused that more than they just mishandled the ball or whatever. Uh, so uh, you know, this is this was the first half was one of the better defensive uh, segments that we played all year long. And uh, I, and then I think they bought in. Like right before we came out here, they came together and said, you know, they didn't act like a bunch of crazies that they won a game. It was very calm. It was very uh, mature. And uh, Nigel took the lead by saying, man, we're going to celebrate. That's one down, two to go. And he says, and, we, and then he said, we got to keep defending like we did tonight. So I was real happy to hear that from him. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow. Okay. This time we're being joined by the head coach of the South Alabama Jaguars, Richie Riley. Coach Riley, if you could start with a brief opening statement, please. Yeah, hats off to Texas State. Um, from, from start to finish, I thought they physically um, whipped us um, from a physical standpoint on both sides. Um, offensively, they bothered us with their physicality, their ball pressure. We didn't handle it very well. And then... Then, try, then guarding them, you know, we made them miss some first shots, especially early and early in the second half, and they, they dominated offensive glass. Um, finished with 15 offensive rebounds, out-rebound us by 14. Um, you know, hats off to them. Um, we, we beat them a few weeks ago at our place, um, kind of messed up their regular season championship, and they came in with a chip on their shoulder, and, and they handled their business. Um, you know, I think they have an excellent chance to to win this thing, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great finish. Questions for coach? We'll go to the back left. Coach, there in the second half, you got the three pointer with the foul. You missed the free throw, and there were several opportunities like that that you had. You'd cut it to six, 
but you just kind of couldn't get over the hump. What, uh, what, what did you think was the difference there down the stretch? Yeah, we did. We cut it close, man. We had to exert so much energy. And, um, you know, I don't ever use fatigue as a an excuse. I don't believe in that. Um, we condition really hard. We practice really hard. So that's not that's not something that you know we're going using it as an excuse because we had plenty of juice. We just we just couldn't make that one play to cut to one possession. And it's like that sometimes when you battle back um, an entire game. And I felt like we were fighting uphill the entire game. And they made enough plays, whether it was them getting fouled in the bonus and making free throws or us making them miss and you know instead of us going in transition they got an offensive rebound put back um again credit their kids their kids um they got a resilient group they came in here and they lost two in a row and kind of you know I, I thought they would win the regular season i think everybody did and and they didn't and and they came in with a chip on their shoulder um i give a lot of credit to their guys they got some veteran guys and a, a really tough group and they just wouldn't let us turn the corner thank you coach anything additional for coach Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you all.